Hello again, everyone. Um, as many of you know, I am a fan of author, illustrator, Tasha Tudor. She was from New England, and she passed away a few years back in her 90s, and she's one of my favorite illustrators. She also wrote many children's books, and there's been a lot of books about her life published. I collect them. I'm going to be doing a program at the library soon on her life, so I was trying to go through some of my books, and I'm going to do a couple of dessert recipes out of this one for the ladies or whoever comes to the program, if I have anyone um, to try. But I wanted to show you some of these awesome looking pictures. Look at this, how she drew. I love her artwork. And, um, this is the Tasha Tudor cookbook. Cooking is one of my favorite occupations, especially when I have my appreciative family on hand to praise my efforts. She was a very unique woman. Very old fashioned, dressed the old ways. This is a fresh tomato salad. And then she draws a picture to go along with it. And that just so cool. She's got avocado and grape salad, French dressing. What I like about it is most of her recipes are items that you would have in your kitchen. They're old fashioned. She's got potato salad. Look at that, just easy, easy. They sound really good. Look at that, how she drew and painted. I believe these are all watercolors. She loved corgis gardening, cooking, making her own clothes. She made dolls and marionettes and put on marionette plays. Corgi cottage soup. That's what she called her house that she lived in. It was built for her by her sons in the 70s. Sorry, there's a glare on that one. But they're out working. Oh, I'll just take that down. They're out working in the garden or look, raking leaves. We have a recipe for pea soup. I mean, look how easy this is. Really good. It's a very good, clean cookbook. You just want to just sit and look at the pictures that she painted and all the work that went into this. I mean, even croutons, there's a recipe for. And she has breads and muffins. She always did this around her um, books. Her, many of her pages and things had that around it. That cat is Menu. I believe they call it Menu. It ha had one eye. And uh, it was blinded in one eye. White bread. And she ate bread. She wasn't afraid to eat bread like everyone is nowadays. I mean, you know, bread is the staff of life. It's all in moderation. There's Manu again, sleeping. Oatmeal bread. Now this one sounds really good to me. And look how easy. It's just got rolled oats, salt, molasses, unsalted butter, boiling water, lukewarm water, yeast, and unbleached flour. It makes three loaves. That sounds like a really easy recipe. There we go. If you can see it, I'll share it with you. And um, very frugal. Everything she did was usually normally frugal. Bethany was her daughter. That's Bethany's graham bread. It was her oldest daughter. Rolls, hot cross buns, butterscotch. Look at that gorgeous picture. Mostly all of her pictures, um, paintings were of older times. And I love that look. She had a dollhouse that was life-size almost in her home. And um, all the little kitchen utensils and such you see here. She had a maid, or if she bought them for that dollhouse. Boston brown bread, date and nut bread. There's her corgi. She loved her corgis. It's a beautiful winter scene. And that it looks like Corgi Cottage there. That looks like her home. Just, oh yeah, 
great-grandmother Tudor's cornbread. Is that like not easy? I'm sorry, I'm not good at doing this. I just want to show this book off. I've got all these wonderful books, and I don't ever have anyone to show them to. And if you like it, I really want to do the dollhouse one so you can see what that looked like. It was truly amazing. That was the little oven she cooked in. She put it in front of a fire place and cooked turkeys. There's roast beef. Look at all those corgis laying flat belly. There it is. It's a tin kitchen, I believe is what it was called. I might be mistaken. Oven brown potato. I mean, there's just all kinds of delicious things. There we go. There's Corgi Cottage again. Look at the detail in all of that. The tin kitchen. And then, see, she got a... Comp a Accompaniments, but I love. I mean, I just wanted you to um, check out entertaining. Look at that. And many of my homesteading families will just eat that up. Isn't that awesome looking? It's like a dream come true. <laughs> she milked her own goats, made her own butter and cheese, baked her own bread. She lived the life she had imagined. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I was going to flip my camera around, but that would make it look weird. Just the detail. It's just, I don't know. I don't know a lot about art, but I do know I love this. Look at all that. Look at the sweet faces. But there's also desserts in here, and in those desserts, I hope lemon jelly to make a couple of recipes for my program. It's in June. I got a lot of catching up to do, but I hope it um, turns out well. I may even do Christmas cookies, who knows. Um, it's just gorgeous. Anyway, I hope you like this. There's a lot more to it. That's the back side of it. It is a one, it's an A++ cookbook and just book with a lot of art in it. And if you love homesteading, old-fashioned living, old-fashioned cooking, gorgeous artwork, this cookbook is the one for you. It's just a it's just a wonderful collection to start, and this is just uh, one of my favorites of all of her books. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you have a nice evening.